Welcome to Sharky's Gaming Controllers. I'm Sharky and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Hori Wired Controller Lite for PS4. Now this is the Dragon Quest Slam Edition and it comes in this cool packaging. So right here in the center is where your controller is and you can see the controller through the plastic there. But another nice touch is the fact that this plastic is shaped like a slime. You can see there it's kind of got a slime shape. It's quite a cool little touch to the packaging. Now on the side here you've got the PS4 logo, the Dragon Quest logo. You do have some text in Japanese here and that just says Dragon Quest Slime Edition. You got a little slime and you've got the Hori logo down the bottom. Flipping this over, on the back you've got a lot of text in Japanese. And of course, down the bottom here, it has another display window showing that it's a USB cable that is used to connect this controller. So once you pull out everything from the packaging, this is what you get. You of course get the wired controller itself, and you also get this manual. This manual may be in Japanese, but it still has a lot of nice handy information here. So when you unfold it here, of course it goes over the basic, the contents, etc. Also shows you the functions of all the buttons there. But on the reverse, and this is probably why you mainly want this manual, it goes over touchpad mode. Now touchpad mode is essentially the replacement for the touchpad, since this controller does not have its own touchpad. So instead, you use the analog sticks to do the same sort of functionality. So this just goes over how you actually use it. So this one shows you how to tap, tapping two points, and then it goes uh, dragging and flicking. And then here it goes into pinching out and pinching in. So it's a very handy reference if you want to use the touchpad mode. If you don't really care about the touchpad, then this is pretty much useless. You don't need to worry about it. But hey, if you need to use it, it's a good reference because it might take you a few goes to get your head around how these all work. Um, because it basically uses the analog sticks as the touchpad instead of actually using a touchpad. So it's quite cool that they've added it, but it's there if you need to use it as a reference so you know how to actually use it when you need it. So now let's have a look at this controller itself. So of course this is a wired controller, so it connects via USB to your PS4 console. Now the cable is a decent length, it's about 3 meters long, so it should be enough length to go from where you're sitting to your console. Now let's look at this awesome looking controller. And it really is awesome looking, it's got a really cool theme to it. So that's the top of it there, and the side, other side, and the bottom. Now this whole controller is a very soft to the touch. It's got that kind of soft rubber finish going all over the controller. So it's quite smooth and soft to touch. And it looks really awesome. I really like this kind of multiple shades of blue. So you've got the light blue in the background there. And of course, then you've got the darker blue in the shape of the slime. And another nice touch is the fact that one of the analog sticks is actually the slime's eye. So from the top there, it just almost looks like this controller only has one analog stick because this eye just seamlessly blends in to the background. But of course, as soon as you angle it, you can then see that there are in fact two analog sticks and that one is just blending in with the slime. But of course, I don't know how happy the slime would be when you start digging into its eye when you start playing with the left analog stick. Um, I don't know, it kind of looks like it's unhappy. But it's quite a cool little thing. I really like the design of this controller. And of course, on the side here, you've also got a nice little baby slime that's kind of smiling there. Um, it's quite a cool looking design. Now let's get into these features. First off, on the side here, you've got the D-pad. It's quiet, but it is very hard to press. And I do find the edges of the D-pad here kind of dig into your fingers a little bit because you have to press a little bit harder. So if you press too hard, you do feel those edges digging into your, your thumb there. And also it's quite hard to get the diagonals. You've got to get right in the center there to do it. And more often than not, you'll probably hit one of the directions instead. So in terms of D-pad, it's not bad, but it is quite hard. It, it could be better. In the center here, you go into the share button, which is like a small little rubberized button. Same with the options button here. And then you've also got a touchpad button there. Notice you're missing a touchpad, it's just got the actual touchpad as a button. Now down the bottom here, you've got the PlayStation button and that's also a nice rubberized button. Moving over the side here, you go into your face button. So of course you've got square, triangle, circle, and X. These feel quite nice and are very responsive. 
Then of course you've got your two analog sticks down here. Now these will feel like they have a bit more resistance than what you're probably used to from the Dual Shock 4. They feel quite nice. And you can press them down as well. And they've also got this really nice kind of textured grip on the top here so that it's more likely to grab on your finger so you're not going to slip off as easily. Um, it doesn't feel too bad. They feel quite comfortable to use. Now just below the analog sticks, you've got another button here called the TP button. And the TP button is basically stands for touchpad mode. So like I mentioned before, this does not have its own touchpad. It's just got a touchpad button here, which is just a really small button. Press it, you know, to open something or trigger whatever the touchpad does in that particular game. So to counteract the fact that it doesn't have its own touchpad, it added touchpad mode, which basically allows you to use the analog sticks to use touchpad functions. So when you hold this button down for two seconds, then essentially it turns the analog sticks into the touchpad. So then you can do different things. And that's why you sort of need that manual because the manual does show you how you actually activate all the functions. And it usually requires you to do a combination of either pushing one stick down and then tilting the other or vice versa, or sometimes doing that and then doing something else. So it does have a few different steps depending if you want to pinch out or pinch in, you want to drag or flick something, you know, basically all the main touchpad functions. Now, of course, it is there and it's nice that they've added it. So it's, it's good that they thought of that and they thought, okay, we'll add some kind of alternative in case a game requires it. But realistically, if you've bought this type of controller and you want to use this controller and you know it doesn't have a touchpad, then the touchpad is probably not that important to you anyway. And I mean, realistically, in most games, you use a touchpad as just a button. So you've got that anyway. So if a touchpad doesn't mean much to you, then it probably doesn't matter either way. But it's there if you need it. I do find, though, you may have to consult the manual a few times just to get your head around how to do certain things with those analog sticks. And of course, like when you're done, if you don't touch the analog sticks for about three seconds, it'll automatically exit the touchpad mode. Um, or you can also exit it by just pressing any one of these other buttons. Um, so it's quite a cool feature. I'm glad they added it, um, but it's not really necessary. I mean, most of the times you probably won't even use it. Uh, but it is a cool feature nonetheless. Now moving on into the back here, you've got your triggers and bumpers. So of course you've got your R1 and R2, L1 and L2. Now the bumpers are very small, so when you're holding this, they're much smaller than what you're probably used to. And the triggers, although they do feel quite nice, they don't feel like triggers. They feel more like buttons. Um, but both these are quite responsive and they work quite well anyway. Uh, they just have a, a slightly different feel to it from what you're used to with the DualShock 4. But being a small controller, um, it's quite nice. I mean, you can reach all the functionalities quite easy, all the buttons, the sticks, D-pad. And of course, you can do that. You've also got this grip at the back here, which helps you hold the controller. So when you're holding the controller, you're kind of gripping that little grip there, pressing the buttons. It's quite comfortable to use. It is small, so if you've got bigger hands, you may struggle a little bit. It may be a little bit more uncomfortable for you. Um, so it's something to be aware of because it is quite a small controller. Um, but it works quite well and it's quite comfortable to use as well. Uh, the one thing to note as well, this does not have like an audio jack or anything like that. So if you've got a headset or headphones, you'll have to plug those into your PS4 instead of into your controller. Or you'll just have to use a DualShock controller instead. Um, so that is one thing this controller is missing as well as that touchpad. Um, but other than that, I think it's a pretty cool controller. I mean, it looks really nice. It's a cool slime theme to it. And I really like the fact that they made the, the analog stick the eye. I think it's just a, makes it a little bit different and pretty cool. But again, I don't know if the slime would be too happy with you at the end of a long gaming session after you've been, you know, basically wiggling its eye around the whole time. Um, but it's pretty cool anyway. I think this would make a great addition to any kind of Dragon Quest fans collection. If you're a fan of Slimes and Dragon Quest, and this is definitely a controller to look at. Overall, this controller is quite cool. The color, the design, it looks really nice. I really like the slime on the front of it there. And of course, functions-wise, it works quite well. All the buttons are responsive, and it's quite a comfortable controller to hold. The one thing to note, though, is this is a small controller. So if you've got bigger hands, it's just something to be aware of because it might not be as comfortable for you. 
you might find your grip is quite cramped with this controller. Now, of course, this is a slime controller, so if you're a Dragon Quest fan or collector, this is definitely an item that should be in your collection. And if you're not a Dragon Quest fan, but you like the look of this controller, well, there's good news. There are other variants available. So there's different colors that you can buy from Hori. Anyway, guys, that was the Wired Controller Lite, the Dragon Quest Slime Edition for PS4. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then uh, please press that like button as it really helps out a lot. Feel free to subscribe as I'll have heaps more gaming controls up very shortly. While you're there, hit that notification button and share this video with your friends. And if you would like to support my channel, go ahead and click the join button down below and become a channel member. You'll get monthly perks and of course the extra support really helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.